Hello, and welcome back to RailsQuest. In this video, I want to talk to you about Kamal, which is the new deploy tool that is included in Rails 8. Now, some people are complaining that Kamal is more complicated than they expected from a tool that's included with Rails. We all have a really high standard with Rails, so I get it. But I'm going to talk to you today about some of those concerns, just a small subset, and there are a lot of legitimate concerns, but I'm going to talk to you today about how we can alleviate one part of those concerns and how you can own your entire development and deployment infrastructure. So let's take a quick look at some of the feedback that we get in this example post. And there are a few similar ones. You now need a Docker uh, container registry. Container registries cost money. You can find some good free tiers, by the way, with GitHub, for instance, you can get started and you can start your Weekend Warrior project for free. Uh, you don't have to set up any kind of Docker repository yourself, but it's a legitimate concern. There are limitations, obviously, on the free tiers for these things. And you can see there's a lot of feedback here, and I'm not going to address all of it. We are still going to use Docker and one of the complaints here seems to be that it requires Docker and there's not much I can do about that. Kamal needs to adjust for the use of or the lack of Docker in their tool. But what I'm going to do today is help simplify your exit from the cloud. That seems to be the trend in the Rails community right now. DHH has been posting quite a bit about his company's journey of exiting the cloud and saving literally millions of dollars already from exiting the cloud and running things on their own servers. So if you're just starting out or you're watching this video, you're most likely not in a position to be spending millions of dollars on server infrastructure. You're most likely getting started with Kamal or maybe looking at migrating your existing apps to Kamal to gain some of the benefits of using a tool that's integrated with Rails. So in the interest of helping simplify your experience, let's talk a little bit more about some of the concerns that people have, like what is the actual complexity that we're complaining about? And let's look at a solution, one possible solution to help eliminate one of the dependencies that you might have when you're first starting out with Kamal. So here is an example Kamal configuration file. It should be very familiar to you. Instead of deploying a Rails app though, what this Kamal specification does is it deploys a Docker registry. So this means your own registry at your own domain, for example, example.com, docker.example.com is where you would be hosting your own personal registry, you know, your company.com. So you've got your own Docker registry. So you're gonna put your credentials here, or you're going to put your username here and you're going to specify a server here and where you store your password. Now this is the line that's going to be kind of the game changer here today. So I want you to file that away before we get to the rest of this video. So let's look at the actual Docker file, the actual Docker service that we're going to be deploying. It's based on the Docker registry image, which is their official registry image. And this is roughly the way that their documentation recommends that you secure your registry image. I'm not going to go into detail about what this is doing. You can go look this up on the Docker website or you can post specific comments below and uh, I'd be happy to address or maybe even make some more videos about that. So here's, it's very simple, just a few lines. We're just customizing the registry image and honestly, other than this line here, we could do all this with uh, in the environment over here. I just thought it would be easier to demonstrate if it was all together in one place. So don't necessarily take this as advice for your production deployment, but this is the basically what the configuration would look like. So now we're gonna move over here and we're going to build our Docker image just to confirm that it builds. So now that we've got a successful build and see that it's warning about the things that I did here, those are not actually sensitive variables, but it they look like it to Docker. So now we're going to run our registry server locally. This is a registry server that's running on your local machine and you can actually push images to it. In fact, you can log into this machine, it's authenticated. You can't just push willy nilly. And I'll show you that in just a moment. All right, so let's get this push command ready. So we don't have authorization to just push the bare image, right? We're not signed into docker.io and we wouldn't want to push it there anyway. So what are we going to do about that? Well, this is where ingrok comes in. Ingrok creates a tunnel from the open web to any port on your machine that you specify. So I've got this URL and it creates a random one. In fact, I'm going to just generate a new one to show you how that works. 
So we got a new random URL and I ran ingrok HTTP 5050 because that's the port that my registry is running on. And you, it very clearly shows you what it's pointing at. So now what we're going to want to do is build dash T my, uh, my registry. You've got to specify the context. So now that we've built that, let's try to push it. Access denied. So you can see that we were trying to push it to our repository. Well, in order to do that, we need to put add a password to the Docker login. All right, so we've passed our credentials to Docker login. Now we can push to the Docker registry. Okay, you can see that we pushed a bunch of blobs to our Docker registry and we've got a digest there. So that was to confirm that our credentials work. Now that you've done that, you would want to take this URL right here, go back over to your Kamal config, and you're going to want to add it here as the server and make sure that you've got your password set correctly. Once you've done that, you can deploy your Docker registry, or really you can deploy anything and get yourself bootstrapped onto a server without any external dependencies, just using one free tool called ingrok and the official registry image from Docker. And that's it. It's as simple as that. In fact, if you didn't mind changing this URL, you could use the free version and keep deploying using the free version of Ingrok. If you don't want to change the URL, you can pay for Ingrok and you can get a stable URL from Ingrok and you can only deploy, you'd only be able to, to deploy when Ingrok is forwarding that to your local registry. But if that sounds good to you, if that's something that equals simplicity and freedom to you, then that's great. That gets you going, right? That's especially good for, I think, a, a weekend warrior type of project. Now, what I'd like to see from Kamal in the future that would eliminate even the need for this, and I'm looking into it, hopefully getting into some discussions about this soon, is allowing Kamal to deploy a bare image reference so that instead of needing this Docker file, you could deploy with Kamal just the image with this additional configuration tacked onto it. If you know of a way to do this today, please let me know. But if this approach appeals to you, because you can deploy anything, right? You could actually deploy a custom Rails app this way. And that's not something that you're going to be able to get around by using a public image. Well, then that's great. You can use Ingrok. So with that being said, you've got one command. You can now run Kamal deploy. It's going to set up your server with Docker. It's going to deploy this Docker registry. It's going to call back to your local machine using Ingrok, pull that image up to the server and run it, whatever service you're deploying. And once you have your Docker registry running on your server, you can use that as your Docker registry for any number of apps, like I mentioned before. So I think Kamal sits in a really sweet spot right now. There are a lot of platform as a service type of offerings like fly.io, which I recommend to people who are doing weekend warrior type projects because it's really cost effective for servers that you don't care too much about maybe going down occasionally or going into sleep mode so that they save money and save your resources. Uh, I think fly.io is the best thing out there right now for those little toy projects and maybe even for um, a small startup or a small internal service. You can use it for a lot of really good things. One command gets you deployed. So they've got that base covered. Kamal takes you into the territory where you want to own your own res your own infrastructure, your own servers. You either have physical servers or you want to rent servers and hope to grow into owning your own physical servers. Kamal helps make all of the complexity of where your machines are virtually disappear. You know, this is coming from working with clouds like AWS, you know, Elastic Beanstalk, CloudFormation, using even Terraform, Microsoft Azure. It's simpler than all those things. I've used them. I've used them all extensively. And I can tell you if run into headache after headache with these tools from AWS changing, radically changing their Elastic Beanstalk infrastructure, uh, which caused quite a bit of friction in the upgrade process. And they're a proprietary tool. They could just do whatever they want, right? If you own your own infrastructure, even if Kamal decided to change, you run on an older version of Kamal until you're ready to upgrade and you own all your servers so you can do whatever you want 
there, or you can switch to a totally different tool. It doesn't matter. So this is a portable solution. The local registry allows you to free yourself from providers like GitHub. Uh, you can even simplify your infrastructure by using Ingrot to deploy instead of some registry in the cloud that you have to maintain. You don't have to maintain anything because you turn on and off the registry when you need it right so please if you have any questions about this or comments you think it's a terrible idea you think it's a great idea let me know i want to hear about it uh just keep on commenting uh, i love seeing the feedback that y'all are putting on these videos uh and and it really helps me come up with more ideas that hopefully are more relevant for you and that's all that i want so please like subscribe follow me wherever you're watching this video i hope you have a blessed day and i'll see you next time